Hello, this is Vic. Welcome to my channel and thank you for viewing my videos today. I'm in the beautiful and spectacular country of Italy and I'm visiting one of Italy's most historic cities. I'm visiting Florence. I'm visiting Firenze. In this particular documentary, we're going to go for a very long walk. We're going to visit the 25 most important and most historic sites here in Florence. We're going to have a great time, we're going to walk a lot, but we're going to learn so much about history and architecture as well. So this is Vic, let's go for a long walk, let's do it. And uh, here's a view of the absolutely spectacular and graceful Campanile or the bell tower right next to the cathedral or the Duomo. It is 85 meters high, just six meters lower than the highest peak of the dome of the cathedral. Built between 1339 and 1354. It is one of the most beautiful bell towers in Italy. Let's go a little closer and let's admire the beautiful architecture of this fascinating structure here in Florence. And uh, here's a beautiful view of the bell tower from the bottom up. You can see how beautiful it is on a sunny day with the blue skies behind it. Now it was constructed using three kinds of marble, with the different colors of marble, green, white and pink. Each kind of marble came from a different area of Italy. Here are the first two levels, you can see beautiful reliefs. Here's the entrance right there. And on the third level there are some beautiful statues, you can see them right there. Here's another view from the corner, looking up. Stunning, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. And uh, here's a view of the absolutely magnificent Cathedral of Florence, or the Duomo of Florence, or as it is known, Santa Maria del Fiore here in Florence one of the largest and most spectacular cathedrals in Italy. As a matter of fact, if you want to see the three more, most beautiful cathedrals in Italy, go to the Vatican to see the Basilica of St. Peter, to Venice to see the Basilica of San Marco, St. Mark, and here in Venice, in Florence, that is, to see the Duomo. You can see that magnificent dome from miles and miles away. The dome consists of eight marble ribs with terracotta tiles in between and it is absolutely beautiful. Incidentally the dome rises up to 91 meters at the highest point up there, almost 300 feet. Beautiful, isn't it? And uh, here's a magnificent view from the rear of the cathedral. We may get a chance to videotape the front later on as the sun changes direction. But I want you to see how beautiful it is and you can see the dome from here as well. Now you will notice there are three different kinds of marble here. Green, white and pink. This is the same marble, kinds of marble that we're going to see in the bell tower and also at the baptistry. There are different layers of each color and they all work together in harmony to provide this absolutely spectacular view that you see here. 
When you first enter the cathedral, the Duomo, one of the things that really strikes you is how empty it is, with the exception of a few pieces of art, like these uh, two frescoes over there. There's another one behind the column of knights honoring Florentine fighters from the 1500s. There is nothing else around here. What's impressive is the size. It is 115 meters in length and 90 meters in width. So you can do a couple of things. You can walk around and flash people in the eyes taking meaningless photographs or allow them to flash you in the eyes and they will, trust me. Or walk towards the altar and raise your head to see one of the most magnificent pieces of art outside the Vatican. So let's go down there and let's check it out. Okay, when you come to the uh, inside the Duomo, there's one thing to do and that's head towards the altar and then look up at the dome, inside the dome, to see the magnificent fresco by Vasari, the Last Judgment, created between 1572 and 1579. It is absolutely magnificent. Now let's zoom in and let's see if we can view some of the details of this magnificent fresco. It is very crowded around me. But look at the beauty. It will take many hours to explain the significance and the meaning of each part of this immense piece of work of this absolutely spectacular piece of art. And here's the magnificent Battistero or the Baptistry. Let's videotape it now because the sun is shining and it's going to get cloudy very, very soon. I want to capture the beauty of the marble here. You can see the beautiful green pink and white marble as well, just like the dome and the bell tower next to the baptistry. Now this baptistry is the oldest structure here and it dates from the 5th to the 7th century after Christ and it's built on top of a Roman palace. So where I'm standing at right now are the foundations or the remains of the Roman palace. The front that you see here was added between the 11th and the 13th century after Christ. You can see how beautiful it is. And when it's shiny, you can see all three of the structures together, the Duomo, the Baptistry, and the Bell Tower. Your mouth is gonna drop wide open in amazement. This is where the people of Florence were baptized at for quite a few centuries, it is. An absolutely awesome structure, isn't it? And here's the beautiful church of San Lorenzo. Built in 1419 to act as the burial church of the Medici family. Now the Medici family really shaped the history of Florence for many, many centuries. This is where the most prominent members of the family are buried at. There used to be a church here from the ninth century after Christ, but it was destroyed so that this church could be built here in the 15th century. Now the front that you see here is very plain for one reason. Once the church was completed, Michelangelo was supposed to add the front, you know, with a beautiful 
pink, white, and green marble, but he never did it. So this church remained plain as you see here today. However, it is a very popular place to visit because of the art inside and also because of the burial places that you can see inside from the Medici family. San Lorenzo. I'm now on the northern side of San Lorenzo, which is to my left. And behind it, you can find this huge dome right there in the middle of the frame. And that's the Capelle Medici. That's the mausoleum for the Medici family. So you're gonna have to walk around San Lorenzo and go to the back in order to enter the mausoleum of the Medici family. That's where the crypt is with all the tombs. Now here in the mausoleum you're going to find sculptures by Michelangelo, one of the most famous being Madonna and Child, but it will cost you dearly to enter that place. So let's walk around and let's view the building from the entrance. Let's go this way. And uh, here is the view from the front of Cappella Medici. The entrance is right there on the left. But I wanted to show you how beautiful, how massive this place is. All right, up there, a ticket to the mausoleum will cost you eight euros. So get ready to spend a little fortune here in Florence visiting each of these places that I'm showing to you. And imagine if you've got a family with two kids, how much you're going to spend. And that's very sad really because all these attractions that you see here have turned into cash cows for the estate and for the city and also for the private owners for some of the museums around Florence. So let's walk around here and let's view the entrance very quickly and let's continue our tour. Right there. And uh, here is a beautiful view of Santa Maria Novella built by Dominican monks between 1279 and 1357. It is world famous for the beautiful front, Gothic front. So let's walk around the church and let's go view the front. And uh, here's a beautiful view of the front of Santa Maria Novella. We're very lucky that the sun just came out through the clouds. And this way we can videotape this part on the direct sunlight. And look how beautiful it is. Now the front was executed by two different artists. You can see the bottom layer right here by one artist up to that point right there. And the second level by different artists all together. So you can get the idea now that between the 11th and the 15th century, the Renaissance is taking place here in Florence because during that time frame, a lot of beautiful architecture and art emerges in this part of the world that would influence the rest of the world in general. Absolutely stunning. Now let me pause for a quick moment to show you the beautiful square around Santa Maria Novella. This is the Piazza dell'Unità Italiana. 
which I think it means the square of United Italy. It's a beautiful square, very beautifully laid out with lots of flowers, as you can see here. So if you want to take a break and pause for a few minutes and rest, this is the place to do it. It will be noisy, but at least you will have a place to sit, gather your thoughts and plan your next site to visit. And uh, just around the corner from San Lorenzo, on a very busy and noisy road, we find the palace of the Medici and Riccardi. This is Palazzo Medici Riccardi, built in 1444 to serve as a seat of government for the Medici family. Now the Medici ruled Florence for centuries through tyranny mostly and hardly any <laughs> humanity. This palace is very rough built out of huge stone slabs as you can see here with iron bars on the walls and also the benches that you see there where people are sitting on are original. So you could come and sit here outside the palace in the 15th century. The palace was built in 1444, sold to the Riccardi family in 1540. Now, let's go through the main entrance right there and let's go view the beautiful courtyard. In the center of the palace, we find a beautiful courtyard surrounded with beautiful columns as you can see here and statues now around uh, 300 meters north from Palazzo Medici and at the end of a very busy square we find the 13th century Dominican church of San Marco, Saint Mark. And there are a couple of, uh, of items of good news here for this church. Number one, it is free to enter. You don't have to buy a ticket. And secondly, it includes a collection of priceless paintings and frescoes. So let's take our time and let's go inside this beautiful church and admire its pieces of art. Come on. Well, the good news is that uh, San Marco is open for visits and you do not have to buy a ticket in order to enter. Also, right there by the entrance, to the left of the entrance, you can find a very large map of the church describing to you the different masterpieces that you're going to view around this magnificent and very beautiful church. There are paintings and frescoes. That's, those are the frescoes between the paintings from a variety of Florentine artists from the 14th and 15th century. So come here, take your time, follow the map by the entrance and admire these beautiful and fascinating pieces of art. There, on the right, there is also a Byzantine mosaic, very clearly Byzantine which would make sense because Byzantium was in existence in the 13th and 14th century. Well, it seems like the Italians would hire Byzantine artists for some works of art. And 
and uh, just a couple of uh, hundred meters directly south from Piazza di San Marco we find the Galleria della Accademia here's the museum where David by Michelangelo is displayed at and this is by far the most popular and touristy place in Florence. Now this building to my right is the museum. You can see one of the entrances right here and also the very long queues in order to enter. This building was established in 1783 as a school of sculpture, painting and drawing. And since 1873 it has housed the statue of David by Michelangelo. The statue was created in 1504 and it depicts David as he contemplates how to defeat Goliath. Now I'm showing scenes to you from outside the museum so you can get an idea what to expect when you get here. It will cost you eight euros to enter the museum and expect a lot of pushing and shoving. No peace, you're not going to enjoy David, I guarantee you that. You may get a couple of seconds in front of the statue to take a photograph, but certainly you're not gonna be able to videotape it without somebody flashing. Not just somebody, 10 times, 10 people at the same time flashing their cameras and the flash of the cameras on your video. So plan accordingly, come here as early as you can to go inside or try to avoid this place altogether if you cannot handle crowds. Here's another entrance by the way, and you can see how crowded this place is. And uh, just a couple of hundred meters north from the Duomo, we find the beautiful Santissima Annunziata Square. A very historic square, beautifully laid out, as you can see here, with statues and a beautiful fountain that we're going to see right there. This square is very historic because this is where the Florentines were celebrating the Feast of the Annunciation on the first day of the year, which was March 25th. It is a crowded square with lots of traffic, but come here and admire the architecture of the whole square and also visit on the northern part of the square, the beautiful church of Santissima Annunziata. So you can imagine being here, let's say sometime in the 14th century, maybe 1450 on March 25th to celebrate a new day of the year and also the feast of the Annunciation. You can imagine the events that were taking place at that time. And here's a view of the beautiful fountain here at this beautiful square. Now I'm back at the square where the beautiful Duomo, the cathedral, is at. You can see a beautiful view of it. Here's the rear of the cathedral and right behind it here in this yellow building you will find Museo dell'Opera del Duomo. Now remember when I was inside the cathedral I said to you that it is very unimpressive. That's because it doesn't have any art and that's because since 1871 all the pieces of art have been removed and they're in this museum here. Now this building was established in the 15th century actually as a workshop for the cathedral and for the maintenance of the pieces of art until all of them were removed here and it turned into a museum. In the courtyard here of this museum 
is where Michelangelo completed David in 1504. And uh, this view that you see here has been videotaped three hours after the original view that we saw this morning. Luckily the sun came up once again and we can view this side of the cathedral and all its beauty. You can also see how much more crowded it is right now. And that's a beautiful view of the bell tower right there. And now you can really see the harmony of the green, pink and white marble between the two buildings. That's the exit, by the way, in case you visit the Duomo, that's where you're going to come out of. Okay, take, let's uh, take this opportunity to also view the southern part of the bell tower, now that the sun has changed its position. It is absolutely beautiful, isn't it? And uh, now we can finally see the baptistry in all its glory and beauty. Look at that right there. As the sun's rays are striking and hitting this beautiful marble and make it shine. Let's walk towards the building. Let's see how far we can go be before we get bumped. And let's get another close-up view right there. Absolutely magnificent. And in the far distance you can see the bell tower of the Duomo and I'm just south of it. And here is the church of Or San Michele of Saint Michael. You can see there are three different floors to this huge building. And the story goes that in the beginning of the 14th century, this was the building used for sale of grain. Then the building became too small for these purposes and the first floor was converted into a church devoted to Saint Michael. So what you can do, you can come over here, walk around the building, walk to the rear of the building towards the direction and go inside. It's free to visit and it's a beautiful church inside indeed. Let's go for a quick view. I'm now inside the ground floor of the once thriving market and this is the church of Or San Michele what happened here is that in the 14th century, the authorities ordered the ground floor to be enclosed with walls. Actually, if we walk around, you can see that the walls right there between the columns were added later. And they also ordered the wealthy merchants to build a church here. And as a result, this is the 14th century church of Or San Michele. The most remarkable item to look at when you come here is this absolutely magnificent 14th century marble structure at the altar with multicolored marble, as you can see there containing a, an icon of Virgin Mary. If you also get here, make sure you walk around and enjoy the 14th century frescoes as well. And uh, just south, from the Duomo, from the cathedral, you can find this beautiful building here constructed in the 16th century. 
this is Mercato Nuovo, this is the new market. Now, it used to house, for at least three centuries, gold, silk, and wool shops. Now, all you're going to find here are very tacky souvenir shops, leather shops, and plenty of shops selling t-shirts. But it's worthwhile to come here and walk through the market. Just get ready to fight the huge crowds that start descending at this place around 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, in the uh, southern part of the market, don't forget to visit the Fontana del Porcellino, the fountain of the boar. This is a 17th century bronze statue of a boar. It's a copy of the original Greek marble statue, which is uh, kept in one of the museums here in Florence. But tradition has it, if you come here and you rub the snout of the boar, you're bound to return to Florence. That's why you see people coming over here. They drop a coin in the fountain and they rub the snout of the boar. And these people will be fortunate enough to return to Florence one day. And uh, finally, I'm in the center of the old town of Florence. I'm at the Piazza della Signoria here in Florence. The famous Palazzo Vecchio is behind me. We're going to come back in a few hours to videotape the palace or Palazzo Vecchio from outside as the sun will change direction. I want to videotape the front of this magnificent palace. But let's go back to this square here, this vast square. And you can imagine the events that took place since the 13th century here at this square. This is the square where the vast political might of Florence was exercised at for at least four centuries. And a lot of triumphs were celebrated here, like the return of the Medici in 1530. A lot of people were burned at the stake here as well, when they were accused of being heretics. So come to this square, walk around, hopefully you're going to get a sunny day and enjoy the architecture. and people watching. You can see how large the square is with palaces all around, beautifully preserved. And that's uh, Palazzo Vecchio, the palace that we're going to visit a little later on. For now, we're going to visit the platform or the Loggia della Signoria, right next to the palace. This is a beautiful platform that was built in the 14th century for public events and performances. Nowadays, it contains a wealth of priceless statues from Italian masters and it is absolutely free to come here and to walk around and to admire all these beautiful sculptures. Only 50 people are allowed on the platform at one point in time. So you may have to wait, but it's well worth the waiting time. And uh, this beautiful, immense palace that you see in front of me is Palazzo Barzello with a beautiful tower as you can see at the other end right there. It was built in 1255 to house the seat of government here in Florence. 
1574 it was turned to the chief of police and it became a prison and quite a few inmates were executed in its courtyard it remained a prison until 1859 and since 1870 it is a national museum of Bargello it will cost you eight euros to enter this beautiful place and to admire the most extensive collection of Renaissance sculptures and statues. And finally we arrive at uh, the point where we can uh, view one of the most uh, popular and famous places here in Florence. This is Ponte Vecchio. This is the old bridge of Florence. And if you visit Florence, you must cross this bridge at least once. The bridge has existed here since Roman times. And until 1218, it was the only bridge that was crossing the river Arno. In 1345, it was completely destroyed by floods. And it was completely rebuilt. This was the only bridge that the Germans in 1945 did not destroy when they were leaving Florence. They destroyed every other bridge here in Florence. What they did, they demolished all the shops and the buildings around or on the bridge and they tried to block it. The bridge suffered extensive damage also in 1966, but it's strong, busy, popular and the best thing to do when you're here is try to cross it at least once and so let's uh, make the wild assumption that you have seen everything I have presented to you so far it's still the middle of the day and you have so much energy left to see more art then you head down south from Ponte Vecchio, the beautiful bridge that you just saw, and you visit Palazzo Pitti, the Palace of Pitti, P-I-T-T-I. This huge, immense structure that you see here was built for Luca Pitti in 1457, a very, very wealthy banker. The Pitti family lost their fortune in the 1550s and they lost this palace as well to the Medicis and this became the Medici Palace after 1550. Now it houses several museums and you can spend days in here touring the museums full of silver, sculptures, art, modern art, costumes and so on. It will cost you 13 euros to enter the palace. If you've got the energy to do so, that is. Well, it's been about five hours since I started videotaping the different places here in Florence. I have finished 17. I've got quite a few more to go. And in case you're wondering, I've walked around for about six kilometers today. I've got a couple more kilometers to go. Let's continue. And uh, back on the northern bank of River Arno, and just east of Ponte Vecchio, we find the world famous Gallery of Uffizi. This beautiful building that you see here to my right was an administrative building built in the 1560s. Ownership was passed to the Medicis and finally it has been converted since the 19th century to the famous Uffizi Gallery. Now the sculptures from this gallery moved to the Palace of Bargello that we saw in a previous segment and this place here is world famous for the paintings starting in the 13th century all the way up to the end of the 18th century 
and it includes paintings from all the Italian masters from the Renaissance one of the wealthiest collection of paintings anywhere in the world it will cost you 13 euros to enter and if you want to get an idea how busy this place is allow me to walk through here's one line to my right these are individual tickets these people are waiting to buy tickets to enter and on the other end are the groups that's how popular this place is and how busy it is the lines start out here and continue to the end of the building and all the way here in order to enter and uh, here is the absolutely spectacular Palazzo Vecchio, the old palace, right in the center of the old part of Florence. The tower that you see rises 95 meters in height. And look at the crowds all around this magnificent palace. At one time, Michelangelo's David used to stand here in front of the palace. It has now been replaced with a copy, as you can see. And just east from Palazzo Vecchio, we find a vast square. This is the square of Santa Croce, the square of the Holy Cross. And here we find this beautiful church, the second most beautiful church here in Florence. This is the church of Santa Croce, the church of St. Cross. Built in 1294 for the Franciscans and it was decorated with a beautiful marble front that you see here in the 1860s paid by the English Francis Sloan. This church has been used as a burial places for the most famous residents of Florence including Galileo Galilei, Michelangelo, Rossini and Machiavelli and it is absolutely stunning in appearance isn't it well admit it you thought I had forgotten to show you one of the most beautiful views of the cathedral of the Duomo but I had to wait until the Sun moved along the skies to get ready to set and this is the proper time to view the magnificent front of the Duomo even though the church was finished in the 13th century and the dome was added in the 15th century the front was not completed until the 19th century and it is an absolute riot of green white and pink marble with so many statues you can hardly count them all look at the details of this incredible front absolutely massively spectacular and stunning you can stay here at this spot where I am at and turn your head upwards and enjoy this riot of colorful marble art architecture and splendor not to mention the beautiful bronze doors and uh, this absolutely massive fortress that you see here built in 1534 by the Medici family 
is located just north of the central station here in Florence. It was built by Alessandro de Medici not to protect Florence from invasion but actually to protect the Medici from the rest of the Florentines here and it is absolutely massive as you can see here's the moat separating the main part of the fortress fortress da bossa b-o-s-s-a here's the main entrance to the fortress there used to be a drawbridge here during the 16th century when the fort was first built and it is absolutely massive so if you do come here to Florence walk around and admire the architecture of this magnificent fortress Fortress da Bossa and uh, here's a view of the absolutely spectacular and magnificent Forte di Belvedere the Belvedere Fort here in Florence built in the 16th century by the Medici family it is located on a steep hill on the southern bank of River Arno right above Ponte Vecchio it is perfectly intact and it was not built for defensive purposes it was built to intimidate the enemies of the Medici family to intimidate the Florentinians from ever revolting against the family or challenging the family in any way now this is closed for most of the year it is open for three months during the summer and it will cost you around eight euros to get inside and it is an absolutely fascinating place to visit it is beautifully preserved and it is absolutely full of history as you see here So I'm right back at the spot where I started seven hours ago. This is the cathedral, as you can see to my left. So what did we accomplish today? Well, we walked around eight kilometers or about five miles. We visited 25 sites, the most important and the most historic sites here in Florence. We learned quite a bit about every site. We learned about architecture and history as well. We also learned that you need a small fortune to visit this city and to go visit the historic and the important places and the museums here. We had a great time anyway, didn't we? This is Vic, thank you for joining me. And if you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. Bye bye.